Hello, my name is Sean Ennis from Ennis Management, and thank you for joining me here on the Creative Collective. And today I'm honored to be joined by a very special guest. He's a recording artist and songwriter from Holyoke, Massachusetts, Hallat Jones. How you doing, everybody? How you doing? So let's start with your stage name. Talk to me about how that came about. So, so basically, when I was younger, um, I used to roll around with a group of people who used to call themselves like the Swag Team and stuff like that. And we used to we used to walk around and um, and literally call each other. Like when we used to call each other, we used to. For for a response for someone to, to get to get somebody's attention, we used to be like hola, and if the person understood that we got their attention, they would be like wole, and that was that's how it was. It was like hola wole, and, and it was just some silly little thing. So when I was when I started creating my name, I, I wanted to bring myself back to when I was just having fun and, and living my life in the best way possible, and that was my youth, my youth years. So like that's that's what the name came to be. Like whole lot was just off the fact of the of me being around people that were just having fun all the time. And we used to just say that as a, as a saying. And I wanted to make sure I, I I put that into my into who I am because that's that part of life that I was doing that was what made me. And the Jones the Jones came from um, a saga where we were just having a lot of parties and and we used to be like oh what up brother Jones and. Hi, what are you doing, Brother Jones? And and my boy, my boy Raheem was was always being like, Yo, what up, Brother Jones? And always like that was just something that we used to say as a slang. So I was just like, Fuck it, my name is Holat Jones. You know what I mean? Now talk to me about the Massachusetts music scene. The Massachusetts music scene, um, you know what I mean? It has it has its ups and downs. You know what I mean? Uh, we're not really noticed upon people. You know what I mean? Because we're not we're not pushing a lot when it comes to hip hop music scenes. We have a lot of reggae and reggaeton music scenes out here in, um, in Massachusetts, but when we're talking about like hip hop, uh, we're, we're all we're all struggling to like kind of like work together, kind of, because you know what I mean. The first, to, the only the only way we ever enlighten our town or our city or our state is by working together, and, and that's what that's what that's that's kind of like the problem that, that Massachusetts is having, just just setting the egos aside and, and actually making the contact and making the moves that we need to do. But yo, I'm telling you right now, there's, there's some young cats out there from Springfield and Holyoke that are putting things together. And they, and if they accomplish what they're doing, you're going to see the music scene increase in, in the mountains. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Atlanta music scene has been thriving so much. It's that willingness for artists to really work together for some of the, um, you know, the bigger veteran artists to go back and work with the younger artists. What do you think some are some of the things that artists in Massachusetts could do to kind of work together better? It's all about it's all about just understanding that we're all in the same we're all in the same state. Like we're all here. We have none of us have has transcended to another level. You know what I mean? We're probably getting better in our craft. You know what I mean? But we haven't transcended into into a level where we can actually look down upon people. I think there's never a level that you should actually look down upon people, but I'm trying to say, if you're gonna put yourself somewhere, you should put yourself in a level that is, is that is comfortable. And it's like most of us have not even touched the base of even half the things that the major artists are doing. So I think if we set our egos aside and treat each other like we would treat our own craft, I think we'll I think we'll actually make this work. What genre do you consider your work to be? And also, how would you describe your music? Well, if I had to pick a genre, I would say well, it would be like hip hop, alternative rock, maybe a little bit of pop. You know what I mean? I try, to, I try, to, I try to put a little bit of everything into my music. I try to, I try to like take a little bit of what I hear, and I, I always go back and 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 try to see if I can make something different that's not the same as everything else. And if I could describe my music, I would describe it as. Uh, just like, a, like I said, a bottle, of, a, bottle, a bottle of energy. It's just like, you know what I mean? There's always going to be something different to my sound. Like, if, if you're not, if you, you might hear me scream and yell on this song. You might be, you might hear me calm and relax on this song. You might hear me sing and 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 um and really get deep into my into that song. You know what I mean? It's all, it's all, it's all like a bottle of emotions. I'm always going to express how I feel, and my music relates on how I feel, and hopefully it relates to others. 
Now I want to go back for a second because you touched on uh, being different from other artists. So can you expand on that? What would you say makes you different from other artists? What makes me different from other artists is just my energy in total. Like my when I come and I go on stage, I go on stage and I look in the eye of every person that's there and I'm rapping to them with, with my eyes directly into their soul. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't go up there and look down. I don't, I don't go up there and be scared. I go up and perform my heart away. When I'm in the booth. I'm I'm in the studio. I'm in the studio and I'm I'm in there. And I'm locked in. My 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 mind is. I can hear a whole bunch of people talking in the background. But my mind is on finishing the track or the record that we're working on. So like my, so if I had to sit here and, and compare what makes me different from everybody else, my energy and my work ethic, I'm just, I'm just all about my business. Now, what music or artists have had an influence on you? Um, well, you know, what I mean, for a long period of time, it was, um, you know, a lot of Tupac, a lot of Fifty Cent, Eminem, DMX. I even had like great the dumb artists like Simon Lennox, Hector Father, uh, Don Omar. There was a lot of like I had a lot of different influences from a lot of different people from music. But if I if I should really will really influence my sound more and more each day, it, it's not even a it's not even an artist. It's a person. One of my closest friends, Direct um, Direct Smith, he's he's always been there to influence me on new sounds and new music. And like, I, I I would like to say that the artists that he showed me were a part of my sound, but I, I like to give the credit to D-Rex. If it wasn't for him, I would have never even heard some of the music that he showed me. You know what I mean? Now, could you briefly describe your music making process? My well, basically, I um when I'm making music, it depends what I'm doing. If I if, if a beat is being sent to me, what I, the first thing I do. I try to think of the most, the most not catchiest, but the most catchy and relatable hook. So I sit around, I, I do, I play with the hook for a little bit. You know what I mean? I, 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 I rehearse it a couple of times. Once I got the hook down pat, I like to record. I like to record it so that way it's already, it's a, I can loop it and I can hear the hook come up in the verse. So what I, I like to do is I like to write, I like to write the verse piece by piece, and then practice it as I'm writing it. So if I, if I read the first part, I like to read. I like to practice that over and over again, and so that way it can help me create the second part. And, and and I just go down until I'm done with the verse. And usually it's just like once I'm done, I look over it. You know what I mean? I do the mixing and we hear it. We see what parts that we don't like, what parts that we can change. And once we once we like everything we do, we mix it down. We put it up. <laughs> you know. And what inspires you to make music? It's really, it's really now. It's just like what inspires me now is just, is just the fact that it's. I seen so many of my friends around me have dreams growing up and give up on them so easily because of their failures. So when I when when I look at my music, I started this music when I was like nine years old. Like you know, what I mean? just just playing around with my friends and then gravitating towards the studio, making a studio. And it's like I seen all the work effort I put into this, all the. All the, the things I had to pay, all the people I had to get mentored by, and it's like, it's like I, I can't quit now. It's like I came too far to go back to, to to not being so motivated about this. You know what I mean? Like I came too far just to just to set this on the side and, and not do this anymore. You know what I mean? So like, for, like the way I looked at it is, I'm locked in. This is for everything. I'm gonna try to be making music until I'm 70, 85, until I'm dead. You know what I mean? Can you talk about? some of the themes and topics that you talk about in your music? Well, most of the things that I talk about in music is a reflection of myself. Um, sometimes I talk about things that happen in the streets of uh, where I live at, and usually it has to deal with me. or what I, it's, either, it's either what I've been through or, or if I was there for it. It's, it's, so it's more of a reflection of self and just of my surroundings. And it's, it's like, you know what I mean? It goes from... From the streets to my, my having being a family man to just having fun and being um, you know I mean a loose cannon you know that's what that's what all my that's what my, my music basically touches is it just touches the the seriousness of my life the fun in my life and then just like the like the reality of my life you know what I mean. So do you take a lot of personal experiences that happen to you? 
and then put that into your music? Yeah, I take I take I take all the experiences that I go to and put into my music. If I'm feeling if I'm feeling any type of way, I'm gonna write a song about it or somehow try to put it into my music because that's the, that in my way that's my only way of ever being able to let something go. You know what I mean? So I I I, 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 I express how I feel through my music because that's that's my way of knowing that I've gone over it. You know, that's really interesting and I've I've talked to a lot of different musicians and a lot of them say that music is really a form of therapy or self expression to them. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, well basically, you know what I mean, it's like whenever I'm whenever whenever I'm in a certain emotion, you know what I mean, and I hear the right tone and beat and everything, it's just you're able to you're able to let go of so much stress. Because that's what it is. Most of us in this world don't have anything to relieve our stress. So what we do is we bottle it up and then we take it upon people. You know what I mean? We take, it, we take it on our kids. We take it on our family. You know what I mean? And it's like the key to living a happy life is having something to be able to relieve your tension. So if you don't have, and, and that's, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like conducting all my electricity. You know what I mean? It's like a conductor. Like I just throw all my, all my lightning at it and it just, it just absorbs it. You know what I mean? And to the point where it's, it, it, it disappears. It, it dissolves it. So there's no there's no stress levels or nothing. Every every time I drop a song, it always gives me like a bit of a chill, especially when I'm getting into like a deep situation. And it's like and I'm, not, I'm like damn, you know. I, sometimes I'd be like I should have never said that, but I'm glad I said it because now I've spoken my piece and I can move on. And that's that's how I take it when when it comes to music, when it comes to releasing my emotions and using this as therapy. Because in reality, I could talk to a therapist. But it's like, you know what I mean? I, I, I see this method of working a lot more efficient for me. Just for the simple fact that it's like I'm talking to myself. And it's like, it's it, it, and at the same time, since I'm putting it out there and I'm hearing it, I'm able to hear it and reflect. Like, all right, that's something I'm never going to do again. Or, all right, I'm glad that, that went, I went through that. You know what I'm saying? So basically, it's just like, it, they're right. It's always and forever being a moment there. And can you talk a little bit about what it's like to release music and then get feedback from your audience and fans about the music that you release yeah with, with the feedback it's, it's always like it's, it's a beautiful thing when you're actually getting the feedback that, that from people you know you know people actually take the time to listen and they're letting you know that hey you know this the songs are right or the songs trash you know what i mean I, I take all sorts of criticism you know what I mean, and, and and that's because I want to be open to, to things that I can change or improve my craft. I, I never want to feel that I have reached my my uh, my pinnacle. I want to I want I want to be able to feel like I need, I still need to level up. I still need to improve myself in some way. So when the feedback comes in, it just it helps a whole lot. And it's like I, I, it used to be a time where people weren't even giving me a, even a, a, a look. They weren't even giving me a view for even. Even by accident, you know what I mean? So it's like, it feels good now knowing that there's people out there that are actually giving the right feedback and actually telling you what it is, you know what I mean? From And, and, and there's some people on there that will come at you and they'll, they'll say things hurtful, things like, oh, you should stop doing this, and this, you know, or you fucking, you're whack, you know what I mean? And they'll go off on you. But it's like, either way, I, I take it for what it is, you know what I mean? Because they, they might have saw something that was whack, and maybe I do need to clean it up. But sometimes it's like, it's, you can't listen to everybody that comes at you, but when you see that someone's taking a lot of time into their feedback, then you know that that's something you maybe gotta look into. But overall, I, I, I appreciate every single one of y'all giving me giving me anything y'all feel about it. Y'all giving me any type of feedback. I love y'all to death just for that. Now let's talk about your record, Don't Be a Menace. Take me through the creative process and also talk about some of the themes or topics that you speak on on this record. So don't be a menace, you know what I mean? I, I went to the studio, to Angelo's studio, that was my engineer for Don't Be a Menace. I had a feature that day and his name was Asani. And we went, we went, we went, we went, into, the, we went into the studio and I already had like my hook and my verse kind of already in the mix because I, I like to take my writing home and, and, and look at it. I'll, I'll show you what I'm working on if you're my feature, but I like to take it home so that way I can I can 
do like the finishing polishing touches you know what i mean so i i, I was at home i took that and I, I polished it i made sure the hook was good i look i made the hook inspired by like basically thinking about how i'm i'm puerto rican but i'm dark skinned dude. and sometimes and and in certain environments i'm i'm like if i'm if i'm in if i'm in a puerto rican crowd I'm, I'm I'm like the darkest person there. If I'm if I'm in a if I'm in a in a, in a black crowd, then I'm I'm more like the I'm more like oh, I'm the Spanish kid. You know what I'm saying? So I'm never really I never feel like I'm accepted by any of the any of my um of my of my races. So it's like this song was like basically me embracing the fact that I am different. I'm not just I'm not just dark skinned. And I'm Puerto Rican as well, and and I'm gonna be me regardless if you like it or not. So. When I, when I, when I, when it came down to recording it, Hassani wrote his verse on the spot, and, it, and he was just going, then, 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 and he was just going in, and we were able to record it, get it all together, and you know, I mean, we, we ended up doing a video for it. it. Had money, money shot. That was my cameraman, money shot. He's the one who shot the video, and and we had a party. We had like a lot of lot of entertainment. They were doing a party, and we had we we went in their party. We brought our cameras, so we were able to make. To see more fun and have different cultures in that and in that, in that video at the same time. Like if you look at that video, you'll see that there's different there's different ethnicities and there's everybody is in their own zone and they're they're just enjoying each other's company, not worrying about who's who and what's what. They're just like they're just glad to be in the same environment. That's kind of what the song brings. It's just like we don't care about what you think about us. We're we're menaces. We're menaces of society. We're gonna continue to to do what we love to do. With, with a passion, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's basically what it was. Now, do you have another song that you've created and released that you're really proud of that you'd like to talk about? Oh, yeah. I got a song called um, Rich Minds. It's on YouTube, Spotify, everything. And it's um, it's a song about how to have a friend. Because like, in Holyoke, we have a big drug problem in Holyoke, especially with, like, you know what I mean, people bringing in drugs and doing them. And I had a friend that, that overdosed on heroin, and um, you know what I mean. And and it's like, and it's, it's an ironic world because we live in a world where a lot of people sell heroin. So when when you, when you have people around you that are selling heroin and and doing heroin and dying off of it, it kind of gives you like an emotion that it it, it, it makes you feel like as well as shit. Like it's, it we're really in a trap. You know what I mean? So that song was based on just the emotion that I had toward losing a friend. And knowing that I'm slowly losing the friends around me that are involved in the street life because they're they're giving themselves up, they're they're allowing themselves to be part of the cycle of that I sell drugs now I'm using drugs type of type of deal. And I want I, I, I like that song a lot. It got 67,000 views on, on YouTube, and and that's one of my favorite songs, you know, to this day because it, it always that that emotion that I had when I recorded it and when we were when it was all getting finished up. It would never be replicated. It was just something that I was on the spot, and I enjoyed making that record, and I'm glad it's out. Wow, that's that's really interesting. Can you talk about the experience of creating and releasing really personal music? Yeah, that's, it's just it's always a hard, it's always hard to think about releasing your your, your any emotions. You know what I mean? It's always gonna be a, a chilling moment when you hear it on the radio. Like you're not I, like uh, when when I, when I hear a song that I'm talking about that is on a personal level, I'm not even worried about the reaction that, that I'm getting from people. I'm just worried about how I'm gonna how I'm gonna feel comfortable taking it while I'm sitting next to people. Cause you know people always see me and they see me at, at my happiest point. So when I so when I when I release music and they see that I have some 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 things going on in my mind, people don't, people don't, they're not expecting that. So when they when they hear it and, and they look at it, you know what I mean, I, I kind of get that like the embarrassed kind of like oh my god, you know what I mean? yes, there's something I'm going through type of feel, you know what I mean. But overall, it's it's always like I, every reaction I got from 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 explaining something that was personal, I always got that that like that wow, this this was a good record type of feel every time because I was able to let out emotion that people never saw before and they were able to be like wow, you know what I mean, able to embrace it well. It's just for me, it takes me a little bit just to like get used to hearing it being said on the radio. That's all. What are the joys and challenges of songwriting? 
the joys and challenges. The joy, for, first first of all, the joy of songwriting is, is actually catching the momentum. When you have the momentum and you're writing and, and, you're, and you have the bars and everything's coming out good, and you actually have a fire verse, that, that feeling of having a fire verse is like, yo, this is, this is what I'm talking about. And you be, you be amping yourself up, you know what I mean? But then there's the cons. And it's the cons of songwriting is, um, is, is, you know what I mean? It's the fact that you might have writer's block. Especially when, excuse me, especially when you're writing for other people, you know what I mean? Some, I, I like, when I'm writing for other people, I like to I like to hear what they're going through and then write write and try to take exactly what they're going through and exactly what they want to write and to and to what i translate into music you know what i mean so so sometimes it'll be it sometimes becomes difficult because you start losing train of thought or something you know especially when everybody is just influenced with the marijuana and the drinking you know what i mean everybody's in the zone nobody really gets to no nobody sometimes you you lose the train of thought that you had or, or the flow that you had that's why I like to have my environments. Like if I'm gonna re- if I'm gonna write something and we're gonna do we're gonna do just songwriting, we're gonna we're gonna make sure we're sober for that environment and we're not and we're, and we're not too much into the to writers. We're not trying to get too much writers block. And that's, and the thing about that too is like the writers block is like if, if you're alone, it's, it's 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 a lot easier to fall victim to it because there's nobody around you to really give you that that hey maybe you should add this maybe you should add that. So overall, it's like the pros. The pros to songwriting are the adrenaline and the, and the adrenaline you get from writing something when you have full momentum, and then the cons are just the simple fact of just having writer's block or being too fucked up to write a fucking verse, you know? Uh-huh. Can you talk about your music career goals? My music career goals, uh, majority of most of it is just like I just want to live off my, I want to be able to live off my music. To the point where I can that's all I'm doing. Like, I don't want to do anything else. I have I have people that I admire, like Dylan Reese. And Dylan Reese is one of my one of my favorite people I like to put into my admiring list because this man has made a living off his music. And it's like no matter what level he thinks he's on, uh, for, to me, he's on a level a way way surpassed a bunch of us. So seeing him in the in the mix and seeing him is is what inspires me. So that's what I want to do. I want to be able to live off my music. And not have to worry about anything else. Just do music for the rest of my life, you know? How important is a strong online presence to your music career? Well, uh, well, nowadays, you know what I mean? The, uh, the way social media works, you, you, you need an online presence. Because at the same time, it's like, it's, it's, it's not that you need it. It just, it's hard to have one because that's where you actually put yourself promote there. You don't have to pay no blogger. You don't have to pay somebody. We don't. You don't have to pay somebody to like. You know what I mean? To promote your your, your song. You don't. You know what I mean? If you really wanted the the, the the best genuine promotion, you have a social media presence. And it's like that. You know that's that's sending your songs to your friends and and sharing it on your posts. That's that's the best way to get a free promotion without actually without having to to put to pay out of pocket. So that's that's why I always tell I always encourage people like if you do the music, you gotta get on social media. You look like a fool if you don't. Now, what's a piece of advice that you could give for an aspiring musician or a musician who's just getting started in their music career? If I could give them some advice, I would tell them I would tell them that they're not special. Uh, they they gotta they, they they have to humble themselves. They they can't just come in here thinking that talent is gonna bring them to where they need to be. You know what I mean? I want I want the young viewers. To, I want the young viewers that get into rap to understand that marketing and business is, is is a strong part of your your music career. And if you're not out there marketing yourself, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you have the best fire at sixteen. It it, it won't move. And I, 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 I tell people like even if you have bars, bars are good, but what, what the world is looking for, what makes hits, what makes plaques, what gives people the recognition is good songwriting in general, not just freestyling a bunch of bars, or you know what I mean, or not nah, like get into your song mode writing and get into marketing and understand that and try to try try to get people around you to work with you. Don't be so. Don't be so egotistical about working with people. Work with as much people as you can. 
You know what I mean? Because the music industry is small. So once you get in back one, next you know, you know, you have you have an orgy party with all of them. You know, what I mean? that's what I'm trying to tell them. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to be level headed in this game because there's gonna be people that gonna tell you what to do, and they, and they're not telling you what to do to be an asshole. They're telling you what to do because they already know what they're doing. So if they're giving you the feedback and they ain't charging you for it, take the advice. Don't be stubborn. You know what I mean? That's that's what I would tell them. Can you share your social media links? My social media links. My Instagram is at yoke you up. Uh, my my Snapchat is at h zero ten forty. And if, if you need to find me on anything on YouTube, or anything, just pull up Holat Jones. Is there anyone you'd like to acknowledge for offering you financial or emotional support to you in your music career? Yo, the, the the biggest people I have to acknowledge, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, was one Dylan Reese. Dylan Reese was, was the was the mo was one of the people that gave me the most and the most efficient advice. So it wasn't just he didn't just give me advice, and it and it, and, it, and it was half assed He gave me the advice that I needed to to become a a, a better marketer in my music. Cause it, it, it wasn't because you can have anybody can have a trash sound. But as long as they have some good marketing behind it and they have, they have some real good visuals, they can make anybody can be a rapper. So like, I want to thank Dylan Reese because Dylan Reese was also, has always been the realest to me. Always said it how it is. Never never held his tongue. I want to thank Direct Direct Smith for showing me the different genres of music and get, getting me into uh, just different levels of stuff. And you know, the rest of my friends, you know, I mean, from Five Deep to BNTH. To my cousins tonight, Benton and Currency Benton, to Old Squad, all of them for inspiring me, always putting out music. Like, you know, the artists just from Hold Up, the artists from Springfield, for always, um, you know what I mean, being involved. Like, I see so many artists and so many people out there now that, that are really, really trying to get the Unity thing started. And I want to give a big shout out to them, you know what I mean? Possible Chris, um, Dominus X. Um, all, all them people really trying to get the unity started, and, and that, that's that's real love right there. Besides that, everybody else, I'm just glad y'all listen. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to promote or share? Uh, I just want to let y'all know that my name is Holad Jones, and this ain't going to be the last time y'all hear from me. I promise you, we're going to be worldwide soon. If it ain't now, it's going to be later. <laughs> Overall, I hope y'all have a wonderful. I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day. We out here. All right, I would like to give a very big thank you to my guests for joining me here today on the Creative Collective. As always, write your comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video. And for all of your promotion, marketing, as well as music career consulting needs, email ennisproductions at gmail.com.